everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how to reproject and or reformat a raster in QGIS 3.10. So why might you want to reproject a raster? If you don't even know what that means, I, I urge you to check out uh, some videos online about coordinate systems and projections. But essentially, um, you know, some data can be delivered to you in a geographic coordinate system. So it's, uh, it's in a latitude longitude reference frame. Uh, and is best thought of as being data on a sphere. Um, it's quite common though in, in earth science that we want to do analyses um, that are lend themselves better to visualizing your map or your raster um, as a grid of pixels of the same size um, that are in the same area that are on a flat surface. So to do that, we'll often reproject into a projection like a UTM or Universal Transverse Mercator projection. Um, and that's what we're going to do in this video. Likewise, we may also, you may have uh, a file that's in a format that's very space intensive, like a floating point, a 32 bit floating point. You may want to downsample that into an integer format to save space. And we're going to look at that today too. So in this video, we're, we're working on a digital elevation model. It's a raster file from Mount Shasta. And the reason I point that out here is it's in Northern California. And this is a map of the UTM zones of, North, of, of America. And you can see that we're gonna be in UTM zone 10. All right, so let's jump right to it here. And we'll go to our QGIS project. So here's our digital elevation model of Mount Shasta. Um, and we are currently in a pretty uh, obscure projection. It is um, the Geodetic Reference System 1980. Uh, oh, it's actually a geographic coordinate system, not a projection. So the, the GRS 80 coordinate system. And we want to get into a UTM projection so we can do some area and volume calculations. Uh, likewise, we're also in a 32-bit floating point format. Oh, wow, actually a 64-bit floating point format. So that's taking up a huge amount of space, and we want to downsample that a little bit. Um, and so just to show you what that would mean, I'm going to use my Identify tool and click on some of the pixels. And you see the uh, numbers that are coming up over here. It's an elevation in meters, 2750 meters taken out to like the 12th decimal of precision, right? Obviously, we don't need that many decimals. Maybe we need one or two, depending how precise we want to be. Or maybe we can be happy with no decimal places, just using the integer itself. And so actually, in this case, we are just going to reformat so that we go to an integer format. It does mean we're going to lose a little bit of, of data, but um, we're, we're willing to make that sacrifice in part because our application doesn't require us to have um, tenths of a meter precision. But if yours does, then you do not, then you want to stay in a floating point format. So you would only go to integer if your application allows it. Okay, and now the QGIS part is quite easy. We're gonna use this tool called warp slash reproject. I think maybe it's a GDAL, it is a GDAL tool. Um, our input layer is gonna be our, our clipped mosaic. Um, we're going to leave the source coordinate system uh, blank, but importantly, we have to set our target uh, coordinate reference system. And so in here, we're going to go to, uh, we could go to, why don't, why don't we go to just uh, our, our, our geographic coordinate system will be North American datum 83, and we'll use Z UTM zone 10 north, okay? If you need to look up one of these, you can click on this button and then you can actually scroll down through all the projected systems down here, um, for example, and find you know, WGS84 or, or anything you need down here. You can also search for stuff. So you, you if you're watching at home in the, my class, you may need to actually search for UTM zone 10. Um, okay, and then very important is resampling method. So, when we reproject, it actually causes the pixels in the image to be realigned and sometimes to be resampled. It, it's sometimes the case that the pixels are basically changing shape. And so you need to decide uh, what value you're going to assign to these new pixels. And of course, you want to represent your, your previous pixels as closely as possible. 
Um, so one option is to choose nearest neighbor, where as it, as it reassigns the pixel location and shape and size, um, it will just take the value of whatever pixel was closest to it in the previous image. Um, however, for things like elevation data, that can create weird problems where you get kind of abrupt transitions that weren't meant to be there. Um, so I think we're actually going to choose bilinear, where it's actually going to estimate a new elevation value um, for each pixel based on uh, a bilinear interpolation of the neighboring pixels. So we'll choose that, and then uh, this is very important, output data type. So here's where we have a chance to reformat our data type. And in this case, I think we will go down to a 16-bit, we can go down to a 16-bit unsigned integer. Um, we need, we, we don't want to go to 8-bit, which would just be this byte, because we need to preserve more numbers than just 0 to 255. Right, our, our values range up to 867. So if we forced it into 8-bit, we'd force it into 0 to 255, which would, which would be bad. Um, if we choose, um, un but we don't have any negative numbers, so we don't need to use signed integer. So we can, we can use an unsigned 16-bit integer, which will allow us to, to go up to a high enough number to capture all of our, our values, but they will be rounded off, of course. If you want to stay in 32-bit float, go here or 64-bit float go here. OK, so here we go. And of course, let's um, save our file. We're going to save it as a permanent file. So I'm using the file name Shasta Mosaic Clip UTM 16-bit. And we'll hit Run and hope for the best. OK, so that finished. Notice our values are now in integers. Um, and our projection, hopefully, is now in, wants to do a conversion because we may not be matching the project. Our projection is now in NAD83 coordinate system UTM zone 10. So we'll hit OK. And then we're in 16-bit we're in unsigned integer. Hit OK. Uh, notice we got these black fringes. Those are just, uh, it, it assigned no data values to be 0. If you want to get rid of those, you can go to Properties, um, Transparency tab, and actually set an additional no data value as 0. And then it kind of just doesn't display them. Then, of course, we will remove our previous version. And you probably want to delete that from your file folder as well. Stay tuned for some Hillshade analysis.